Hello, biology B students. This is Mr. Goyette with National University Academy. We're just going to go over the review information for the Unit 2 quiz, as well as going over some of the topics you'll see um, to review uh, binomial nomenclature and taxonomy. Um, your key terms, just to begin with, and of course we went over this in the class live last Wednesday, are um, taxonomy, which is the science of naming and classifying organisms. You'll find that on page 300. And then uh, for your, to remember the order of it, you have several different mnemonic devices. One of them is do kindly pay cash or furnish good security. Of course, if you, that, that's just as hard as to remember as the actual order itself. So some people prefer do keep plucking chickens or face getting sacked. More of a British um, saying in origin because we don't say sacked here in the United States as much as they do over there, but sacked means to get fired. So if that helps you remember things, it may or may not. So let's look at that order just the same. The order is, uh, you have domain, kingdom. So domain is what? Similar kingdoms. Kingdom is similar phyla. Phylum is similar classes. Classes are similar orders. Order, uh, the order is similar families. Your family includes similar genera, which is the plural of genus. And then the genus is your similar species. Species is your um, similar organisms in general. But species, remember, that's your basis for um, naming, or your, your basis name for, for categorizing organisms. So later on in the quiz, you're going to see a question on species. So let's look at some of the questions you'll see on the quiz and on your CSTs coming up here in um, May, end of April. So um, you should be able to see the board starting with unit one at the top. Uh, enlarge the video uh, so it's full screen so you can actually read this because if you keep it in the small screen you won't be able to see it. But let's look at the, fir some of the, the first topic you'll see. The advantage of scientific naming, biologists can communicate regardless of their native languages. So um, we talked about the Linnaean system, and Linnaeus came up with this system that uses uh, primarily, primarily Latin uh, nomenclature or naming systems to uh, identify <coughs> organisms in an international manner so that no matter where the person is from, no matter what country or, or language they speak, they can figure out what organism it is based on that system. So what's the advantage? Biologists can communicate regard regardless of their native languages. This is on page uh, 300. And then the basic unit of the Linnaean system is, or of classification, is species. The largest division is the domain. That's on page 302. And then here were those um, mnemonic devices, again, on page 302. They give you one that has to do with um, remembering the order of uh, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. But let's go over what you need to know for uh, the, the exam. Going from kingdom to species, organisms, not organism, organisms become more similar in appearance, page 302. And then it asks you to name the correct order. And this requires a little memorization. Again, you have a two recommended uh, mnemonic devices. If you have any, please post them on YouTube so the class can benefit from them. Do kindly pay cash or furnish good security, or do keep plucking chickens or face getting sacked. Last uh, grouping. Last two questions here for the test up in the corner. Phylogenic trees. Remember, these are kind of, of um, graphic, a graphic organizer, or uh, we've sometimes used uh, word maps in your, to uh, figure out how you're going to write your essays. A phylogenetic tree looks a bit like that. You have this uh, line with these branches breaking off of it. Well, the phylogenetic tree depicts a presumed evolutionary relationship. So what does that mean? Um, it's basically saying what scientists believe is the, the hereditary order of how a species may have evolved. And you'll see that on page 310 of your textbook if you're reviewing for the exam and answering questions in the discussion. Let's look at um, what they call analogous structures or homologous structures. Um, your textbook uses the term homologous structures. You'll also see analogous structures in some 
uh, in some of the glossaries. The reason I pointed out both is because the question you sometimes you see on the CST asks it as analogous questions. Your textbook uses homologous. We remember that anything with the prefix homo means same, homologous means type, so we have the uh, same type or same similar type of structures perform the same function in all organisms. If I'm looking to answer this question on the CST or the SAT, I'm going to see uh, both analogous and homologous as meaning same or similar, and then I'll pair that up with the part of the answer that says same. You can, you can review this on page 286. This actually jumps back a chapter, but it relates to our topic in this chapter. Let's look at multicellular nucleated autotrophs. Remember that these big terms um, really aren't that big if we break them down. Let's look at multi, meaning many or several. Cellular meaning cells, so many a many-celled organism. A uh, nucleotide it has a nucleus, and it, it's an autotroph. Auto, auto means self, and troph means to eat or consume or to create your own food, right? So autotroph is to to make your own food, and to carry on photosynthesis. Remember that this has to do with um, photosynthesis, with how a plant makes its food using sunlight belong to a kingdom of planty. Now, if in this question, uh, it's going to give you the kingdoms. You're going to have um, animalia. You're going to have um, uh, your suborders. So you need to be able to uh, know what all the kingdoms are. Uh, and just remember that if you see autotroph and photosynthesis, that it's going to be in the kingdom plantae, page 412. If I go to 412, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. It's going to go over um, the domain bacteria and the domain archaea. And there you'll see that these domains use uh, a micro, uh, you're using a micro biology to examine them. You're not exam examining these species based on other observable traits like um, features having to do with limbs or legs or eyes or so these are these are smaller organisms, smaller cells. And um, you're looking for characteristics of bacteria, cell wall, gene gene translation apparatus. So you can review that on page four twelve. And then um, number nine, the three domain systems is based on molecular evidence. Again, this has to do with um, how a scientist would, uh, using observable data, categorize these um, these kingdoms. And then ten, the latest, uh, the least inclusive classification group is species. Now, if we go back to our order or taxonomy, you have domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. We end with species, so we know it's the most specific set. It's the smallest, most uh, inclusive group. Uh, a group that has a lot of different things in it uh, would be um, uh, least, uh, it's what says the wording in this question, least inclusive. Just remember the least amount of things or, or related species, they'd have, to, they'd have to have a lot of close traits to one another, they'd have to have a lot of similarities, so this is going to be species. If I go back up to kingdom and domain, I could have a lot more species underneath that larger umbrella. So again, you can look at this on, uh, this would be page uh, in the 390s, sorry, 290s, 298. In taxonomy, if we go to classifying organisms on page 302, it'll give you the reminder that, let's see here, a genus is a taxonomic category containing similar species. Organisms in a genus share important characteristics. For example, the genus Orcus or uh, Quercus is composed of oak trees. The second example. Uh, excuse me, the second word in the scientific name identifies a particular kind of organism within the genus called the species. A species is, a basic, is the basic biological unit of the Linnaean system. 